is a sound I love to hear It's the sound of the Savior's robe As he walks into the room Where people pray Where we hear praise As he hears for joining us this weekend whether you're on your couch in your patio at home or you're at your workplace or still in your PJs we are glad to have you with us um, for church this weekend and so we just want to keep your entire family connected in this season and so we actually have services for pre-k for kids for youth as well as adults that we want to come and gather and just be unified as a church family and so we encourage you to to after this to go watch those with your with your kiddos as well and and come together and be unified check those out. If you haven't been able to find or check our, our daily encouragement, if you haven't found those yet, we have daily videos that drop every morning on Facebook, and we would love for you and your family, we have them as well for kids, for youth, and for adults, of just an encouragement around a scripture. We pray together, and we just want to bless you every single morning and just come together unified as a Waters Church family. So check out those videos, and also I want to let you know if maybe you're walking through something, and we could pray for you and we want you to know that you are not alone and so you can email prayer at the waters church.net and we would love to lift up those needs uh, together as a waters church family and as a staff we want you to know that we care and we love you and so email prayer at the waters church if there's anything that we can pray for with you and one of the cool ways that we've been able to just be the church as a whole church family is our waters church bulletin board and that's actually on Facebook and so you can find that from going to our main Facebook page but also um, you can join it, and then what it what it really is is it's just us being the church and being God's hands extended to just share a need. Maybe you're walking through something, or you have a specific need, and and maybe God has somebody in our church family that can meet it. And so it's share a need, meet a need, uh, join that, check that out, and just it's been such a blessing to see our church family checking in and and taking care of one another. And so we want you to get to be a part of that as well. And I just want to also just tell you, just such a cool win is in this season, God has just been so faithful, um, and you guys have been so faithful in your generosity. And so we've had checks just continue to be mailed in, and just God's provision is just so cool to see people continuing to give online and things like that, even though we're not meeting in these four walls. It's so cool to see uh, you guys, and we're just so thankful for your guys' obedience, your faithfulness, and just for you guys stepping out um, with us in this season. and. and and given and being a part of that as well. And so we're going to pray and we're going to dive in today. God, would you gather, as we gather today, Lord, would you speak to our hearts? God, as we're in different places, in our cars, in our homes, in our living room, wherever we are, wherever each heart and each life is at today, Lord, would you speak? Would you encourage us? God, would you speak to us through your word? Would you breathe your life and your word into each one of us? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's praise the weapon. Let's praise the weapon. 
so much higher than mine and he'll reveal all to come so take courage my heart stay steadfast my soul he's in the waiting he's in the waiting hold on to your hope as your triumph unfolds he's never failing he's never failing I pray that this weekend as we, Lord, gather in your presence, Lord God, that again, the spirit of the Lord would touch each heart and each life. God, that you'd meet us wherever we're at, Lord God, in that period of waiting, Lord, whether we are what seems to be so close to the finish line, whether we're, Lord, feeling like we're just beginning. God, I thank you that you are in it all and you work through it all and that you're with us. And so I pray that your Holy Spirit would touch and meet each heart and each life in a very special way. As we're gathered together in your name, let your presence and your spirit be felt 
in each of our lives, I ask in Jesus' precious and most wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm pretty excited to jump into a new sermon series that we're starting this weekend, and it's called All the Feels. And we are going to be talking about emotions because there, quite honestly, are a lot of emotions that all of us are going through. In fact, we were made in God's image, and we were made with emotions. And uh, so as we process those emotions, I want you to know that the Bible has a lot to talk about that, that God understands our emotions. And right now, we all kind of feel like we're a little bit on an emotional roller coaster with the ups and the downs and everything in between. The definition of emotion is this. It's a conscious mental reaction such as anger or fear, subjective, subjectively experienced as a strong feeling. Our emotions can sometimes be such strong feelings that they literally become reality. But as we ride this roller coaster, there's a lot that we feel. I don't know what it's like for you, but when I go to an amusement park, especially Valley Fair, when we've taken our families there as they were growing up in the summertime, I remember that one of the things I love is at the end of a roller coaster ride, you get to go and you get to see all of the pictures of everybody that was riding. And it's amazing how you can all be on the same ride and have a whole bunch of different emotions. Well, I remember a lot of years ago, and Peg actually found a picture this week, that, that we had a valley fair when we went there and took Nathaniel, our son, uh, on his very first roller coaster ride. And that picture is on the screen right now. And I want you to look at it because it's, it's absolutely awesome to see. Again, we're all on the same ride, but there are a lot of different emotions that are going on that you see there. You can see that Peggy was herself. She was just having a party, the time of her life. You can see that I was trying to bring things together and bring peace to the entire situation. And, and, and we can see Nathaniel, who now is 19 years old and 6'4", a little different than that young boy on his first uh, uh, roller coaster ride. You can see whether it's, it's, it's a terrified look, and yet I think I'm having fun, and yet this is pretty intense, and I don't know if I want to do this again. I remember uh, that when we got done with that ride, that, that he wanted to do that again. And there was a whole bunch of emotions. And so as we walk through this time together, again, we can all be on the same exact roller coaster ride with ups and downs and twists and turns. And we can have a whole lot of different emotions by each of us. What I think is interesting is a huge way of people communicating on social media has, as Facebook has been one of those huge things. And, and, and when you post something or you put something on Facebook, you are, are in a box when you read something or post something of deciding one of six emotions that you have. And so below you, you'll see them on the screen that, that when you uh, read someone's post or you watch a video, you have six ways that you can feel. You can either like it or you can love it. You can either laugh, you can either say wow, or you can be sad, or you can be angry. One button that I think that is, is missing, that it's on my phone, but it's not on Facebook, is the dislike button. Like, when do you get to say that you dislike something? But all of our emotions, we have to decide how we feel about different things. And the truth is, is that we are all feeling different things right now as we go through this. The, the pandemic and the things around us, we're all on the same roller coaster ride. And again, some are on the way up and some are on the way down. And some are feeling the pressure of the turns a little bit more. Some are feeling the pressure of their kids at home. Some, uh, some are, 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 are introverted and they're feeling extremely at peace right now, living their best life. And so we all feel different things. Some are scared and some are mad and some may be annoyed and some may be tense. Some may be even happy in the time of this. Some may be peaceful. Some may be just crazy right now. And, and, and so the thing is, is I've heard the term unprecedented times more than I have ever heard in my entire life, just in these last about five or six weeks. I've heard that term. And so we're trying to figure out how we feel and we're trying to figure out how to respond to those feelings. One of the things is, is it's hard to know exactly how to feel or how to identify what we're feeling right now. Now, when I don't know what I'm feeling about certain thing, I, I go to my wife because she is really good at telling me how I should feel about certain things. In fact, I have found through years of marriage that the voice of the Holy Spirit 
and the voice of my wife sound really, really similar and, and very often are the same. And uh, so it's interesting because uh, she is uh, going to come and share for a few minutes. I love the opportunity to give her the mic because I want to tell you that she is smarter than me. She's more beautiful than me. She is more creative than me. And uh, I am privileged every time I can talk her into sharing for a little bit and uh, into preaching to our church family. And uh, so anyways, she does this uh, Thursday morning Bible study and she's done it for quite a while called Coffee with the Girls. And they meet and she shares thoughts and kind of teaches on different things. And, and uh, uh, it was a while ago that at the beginning of this pandemic that she on video talked with the, the ladies and she shared a, a, a portion and a thing and some thoughts on this that I thought were so applicable. And when she was done sharing with some of the ladies from church, so many of the responses were, I needed to hear that. Now I can understand. And it makes such great sense that when I was preparing for even this weekend, I was like, Peg, will you come and will you share some of those thoughts? Because there are things that are, are, are just epic that we need to hear that I really believe that uh, can really uh, minister to you this weekend. And so I'm excited for the next few moments to turn this over to Peggy to be able to share some of the things that she has. And so I am just going to give my wife a round of applause because I'm preaching to an empty room. But thank you, Peggy, for coming and being a part this weekend. Aww, thanks, babe. Hi, guys. Man, I miss you. I miss seeing your faces. Easter was not enough. And so when we get to come together again, cannot come soon enough. But yeah, you know, uh, like Doug said, I shared with this, uh, uh, with my coffee with the girls, I shared this with them a couple of weeks ago. And as I did, I opened the whole thing up with a question. And I want to open today up with a question for you as well. How many of you are feeling like me just a little off? Now, when I shared this with the girls, it had been about a couple of weeks from when the governor had announced that we were going to be doing something called social learning or, or distance learning. Um, and we didn't know at that point how long it was going to be. Of course, we just heard on Thursday that it was going to be through the end of the year. Um, and he had also asked us to do something called social distancing, whatever that is. I'm a hugger. And so social distancing just isn't even in my vocabulary. But he was asking us to do all of this stuff. And it kind of at first, you know, it felt weird and kind of comical at times. We kind of were making jokes about it. Um, and then it just kind of felt confusing, which it still kind of does. You know, he was talking about this thing that was out there, this enemy, this invisible enemy that's lurking out there. And I was just thinking, could it really be as bad as he's saying it is? Can it really be as bad as they're making it out to be? I, at the time, had not felt any symptoms. Um, I didn't feel sick. And at the time, none of my friends, I didn't know anybody who had been affected by this. And so it just felt confusing. And Doug and I, you know, it was before he had asked us uh, shelter at home. And so we met with the staff that week and we just kind of talked about what it was going to look like when we did an online service uh, that weekend for the first time. And we talked about kind of what it was going to look like at the church with the staff working and trying to do this social distancing thing. And as we talked, it just kind of felt easy, unsettling, and exhausting all at the same time. And it just, I mean, literally, I felt all of those emotions all at the same time with a little bit of dread mixed in. And this feeling felt kind of familiar and I wasn't sure why. I couldn't place my finger on why it felt familiar. And so that night, Doug and I went home and we talked about, you know, the conversations that we had at staff meeting and the plan that we were putting in place. And we started talking a little bit about our feelings and how we felt about this. And as we talked, we realized that we were both feeling the same way. We, we realized that we were both feeling uh, the same feelings about this whole entire thing. We, we were excited about what God was going to do in and through this. And we, yet we felt this kind of black cloud hovering over us. And we could not figure out why. And of course, I knew some of it was spiritual warfare. And I knew that I needed to put on the full armor of God. And I knew that, you know, I was a little bit of fearful uh, for the uncertain things that were to come. And, and so I knew that I had to choose to put my trust in Him. But that feeling of dread just kind of, it just kind of lingered and I could not figure out what it was. And as I look back now, especially over a month of time, I recognize it for what it is. I believe that I have been grieving. I believe that I have been grieving what was supposed to be. And I wonder if I'm not alone in this. 
According to dictionary.com, grief is keen mental suffering or distress over affliction or loss, sharp sorrow, painful regret. It's a cause or occasion of keen distress or sorrow. Grief, it's a weird emotion, right? And it's one that's usually associated with death. But by definition, it's more than that. It is suffering and distress over affliction, loss, sorrow, and regret. And I think because I've experienced uh, death at a young age with the loss of my babies and the death of my mom, I think that's why I recognized this emotion, this monster of emotions. But this time, it felt different. The world is different. You know, just like going to the airport after 9-11 felt different. The world that we knew a month ago, we know will feel different going into the days, the weeks, the months, and the years to come. The loss of normalcy, the financial problems, the fear of financial problems, the loss of connection. All of these things are hitting us all at the same time. And we are grieving collectively. And just like grief that's associated with death, it's hitting us all differently. And there's something called anticipatory grief. And this grief is a feeling that you get about a future that is unknown. It's an idea or an imagined future of what life will be like after the loss of fill in your blank. And the grief that's associated with this virus is confusing because we know that there's a storm out there. Our primitive minds know that there's something out there, something bad out there, but we can't see it. And so it messes, it breaks our sense of safety. It breaks our sense of that we are immune to something bad happening to us. It breaks our sense of planning. It breaks our sense of well-being. We realize that we are not unshakable. We realize we are not unbreakable. We realize that we really do have very little control over our lives. And that's the difficult thing with grief. You can't control it. And so how do you manage something that you can't control? I remember the morning my mom died. My emotions were all over the world and nothing made sense. But the morning she died, my dad and my sisters and my brother and Doug, we went out for breakfast. My mom had just died. We left the hospital and we drove to the Uptown Cafe and had breakfast. We ordered off the menu, we drank our coffee. I remember I asked the waitress for salt. We even talked to people around us and I remember I even laughed a little and I, I could not figure out how in the world as I was feeling such immense sadness could I be laughing. It made no sense. In the midst of grief and sorrow, we were trying to make life normal. And you're probably wondering why in the world I'm telling you this. But I want you to understand that the week and the years that followed, there's only one word that I could use to sum up my grief. And that was unexpected. I never knew when it was gonna hit me. I could never plan for it. I never knew how it was going to affect me on a day-to-day -day basis, on a moment-to-moment -mo -moment basis. I knew that there were five stages of grief. I understood all that, but I didn't understand how these stages worked. I thought that you would go through one stage, graduate that stage, go to the next, graduate that stage, go to the next, until you were finally through the stages of grief. But that wasn't how it happened at all. I would think I got through one stage and something would trigger me, something would happen, and I would find myself right back in that stage that I thought I was done with. And I think we as a society are kind of grieving like that. We're grieving collectively like that, as a community, as a society, as a church. And I, I don't know if we always understand the feelings that are going along with that. We are grieving the loss of so many things, birthdays, weddings, get-togethers, going out to eat, vacations, graduation, prom. We're grieving the fact that we can't come together in these four walls as a church and have church together in this place. 
We're grieving all of these things and so much more because we are grieving a future of imagined loss, anticipatory grief. We may get the heads up next week that this is done. We might, <laughs> but we don't know. We have no idea how much longer this is going to go on. And so we are grieving in the here and the now. We are grieving through the whatnots. We are grieving what isn't to come. We are grieving what will not be. And I want us to understand that when we are able to identify our feelings, then we are able to move on. We are able to work through them and move forward. And when we are able to call this what it is, grief, we are able to identify and recognize that we are not alone, that we are not crazy, and that we can be aware of things to come. There are five stages of deep grief, denial, anger, bargaining, sadness, and of course, finally, acceptance. And here's how it could play out for someone. Now again, it could play out a thousand different ways for a thousand different people on a thousand different days because you don't know how grief is gonna hit you on any certain day. But here's how it could play out. Denial, this virus isn't real. This virus won't affect me. How many of us know a person like that? You guys, they're grieving. They may not know it. They may not understand it. But when they're in denial, they are grieving. Or how about anger? You're telling me I have to stay at home and cancel all my plans? Are you kidding me? How about bargaining? Okay, fine. I'll stay home until May 4th, but then I better get my life back. I better be able to do whatever I want whenever I want. That's grieving. Or how about sadness? I have no idea when this thing is going to be done and I have literally eaten my entire weight in potato chips. That's a lot of potato chips. You guys, on a side note, I had to go back on keto because when he announced the shelter in place, I decided if I'm going down, I'm going down eating all the carbs. And since then, I have not seen a carb I haven't eaten. And so I have to get back on the keto train. But I'm going to get back to you in my notes as well. So you have denial, you have anger, you have bargaining, you have sadness. And then, of course, you finally move on to acceptance. This is really happening and I must learn how to proceed through it. And again, this may be your life for a while. Grief makes no sense. There is no timetable to grief. All of these stages will come and go. Sometimes all at once. Sometimes they might come and stay for a while. Sometimes they might leave quickly and then come back again. There is no rhyme or reason to grief. And that's okay, because that's grief. And so what should our response be as Christians to grief? As a Christian, aren't I above grief? As a Christian, can I be a good Christian and still succumb to all of the feelings, the emotions of grief? Absolutely. Absolutely you can. Do you know how I know that? The Bible is full of verses about grief. It is full of God's promises to you through grief. One of my favorites, he is close to the brokenhearted. He will save those who are crushed in spirit. That's grief. But not only that, our perfect example of grief is Jesus. We just celebrated Easter. And the Bible teaches us that the night before he was crucified, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he was in such anguish. He was in such sorrow that the Bible literally says he was sweating drops of blood. It says in Luke 22, 44, and in being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Listen, if anyone can sympathize in your grief, it's Jesus. And not only will he sympathize in your grief, not only will he be, be close to you in your grief, but he will guide you through your grief. Psalm 23 is a beautiful example of how he is leading us. Psalm 23, 4, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. 
for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. Protect me and comfort me. He is with you. He is guiding you. He will not abandon you, not even in your grief. And so as I close, I just want to talk about there's four things that you can do with your grief. You know, grief is the ultimate expression of the fall. And it's also just the world we live in. But it's also this beautiful way that our bodies are made. Because our bodies know that we are dealing with something so difficult, so deep, so immense, that it helps us deal with these in stages, these feelings in stages. And so we need to accept our grief. Grief is also a gift from God. It can and will draw you closer to Him if you let it. I wish that my mom was still here with me on earth. But my relationship with God is different than it could have been if she was. And so we need to turn to God in our grief. One thing that is about grief that is present always is that it's always there in the midst of something that you cannot change. It's always there in the midst of something you cannot change, no matter how hard you try. You are in a situation that you cannot change. And so what can you do about grief? You can give yourself the grace to move forward, to fall back, to move forward, to move sideways until you finally come to the place where you can accept it. And so we need to give ourselves permission to grieve. Grief affects everyone in different ways. There is no formula of getting through grief. And I can tell you from experience that if you try to stuff your grief, if you try to take a shortcut through your grief, it will always come out in the future in different ways. You must feel all of your grief. And so you must give yourselves time to grieve. And so those four things, you must accept your grief, you must turn to God in your grief, and you must give yourself permission to feel all of your grief, and you must give yourself time to feel your grief. And I would add that you must give others time, care, and compassion as they are grieving, even if it's different than you. And as you do this, fill your mind with scripture. Get more of your truth from the Word of God than you do from other people. Surround yourself with things that you enjoy. Talk to your friends. Spend, surround yourself with your family. Learn that thing that you always said you didn't have time to do. Surround yourself with things that bring joy. And plan all the things that you're going to do when this is done. Because it will be done. We will get through this. We will go out to eat again. We will go shopping again. Girls, we will go to Target just to go to Target again. We will go to the gym again. We will go on vacation again. We will meet again in these four walls as a church to celebrate Jesus. But until then, give yourself time. Give yourself permission to feel all the feels again and again. Thank you so much, Peg, for just sharing so much great stuff. You know, again, the feelings that we feel, they're very real. And when we can begin to identify them, then we also know what we need to give back to God. It also helps us understand what different people are feeling around us when they're walking through, again, the same roller coaster ride that we're on, but yet a whole bunch of different emotions by a whole bunch of different people. Again, as we as followers of Christ handle it with grace, we give grace to others, but also we give grace to ourselves. Maybe you didn't know when you tuned in like exactly what you were feeling and maybe it makes a little bit of sense now. One of the favorite cartoons that I watched when I was growing up was G.I. Joe. And at the end of G.I. Joe, after they taught us our lesson, they said this, and now you know, and knowing is half the battle. 
I remember hearing that. I don't know if it's even statistically true, if it's really half of it or not, but knowing sure helps bring clarity to what you're dealing with. And maybe uh, there is a little bit of knowing now of maybe it identified what you're feeling as you have a graduate that's supposed to be walking a line, that you've celebrated birthdays in your home. Some in our church have had to walk through funerals and loss in this time when nothing's normal. And so we try to figure this out and try to figure out how we're all feeling. And now we know. And so what do we do with that? We do exactly what Peg just said, but we give it back to God and we draw near to him because the deeper relationship that we are in with somebody, the more that we can be open and honest about how we're really feeling. What's interesting is that when Peg comes to me and talks to me about something that she's walking through, I feel honored that she opened up her heart to me. When my kids or or friends come and they want to talk about something, I, I feel closer to them when we are able to talk through and process it together. You know, next week we're going to kind of follow up and we're going to talk about uh, disappointments in our life and how we deal with some of those disappointments. But as we identify grief maybe in our hearts and how it's affecting us through this time, if maybe you're feeling a little off, let me just tell you what God wants from all of us is for us to just come to him. He says in Matthew chapter 11, Jesus was teaching and he said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That's a beautiful thing. It says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Lord, I pray that whoever is watching this, from wherever they're watching this weekend, I pray that your Holy Spirit again would touch their hearts and that they would sense your presence. I I pray that in this time, Lord God, we have a choice to either uh, move away from you or to turn and move towards you. And I pray, Lord, that we would draw near to you, Lord God, that we would come to you, Lord, when we're weary and when we're burdened. And I pray, Lord, that as people draw near to you, that they would sense your very presence saturating their heart that they would feel your very presence of your healing, Lord God, ministering to them in whatever situation, Lord, in whatever emotion that they're feeling at this time, would you be near to them as we draw near to you? So we come to you this day, and I pray, Lord God, that life and encouragement would be spoken into each person, Lord God, that's listening, or that they again would sense you and know you. So Lord, the cry of our hearts this time as we've been together, Lord, is that we would ultimately meet with you. Lord, that we'd know you in our lives and that we would know, Lord God, the peace that comes and the rest that comes when we bring you our anguish and our grief and our sorrow. The good things of life and the bad things of life, we bring them to you. And we know that you are a faithful God. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. And you who old the stars who call them each by name will surely keep your promise to me that I will rise in your victory and you hold the stars who call
Lord, now I pray your blessing, Lord God, over each one. God, I pray again that the God of all hope would guard and protect us and strengthen us, Lord God. I pray that we would draw near to you, Lord God. Lord, that our hearts would be made right in your presence, Lord God, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Maybe you're finding a need that you have in your life and in your heart for Jesus. If you want more information about a relationship with Jesus Christ, you can text 21000. Text follow Jesus to that number. And uh, we want to send you info and scriptures and things that you can read in your Bible to better understand what it is to be in a relationship with Jesus. We pray that everyone would have a blessed week. And uh, we cannot wait until we are back together once again uh, in the house. But until then, have a great week. And we are praying and believing we will see you all soon. Thanks for joining us this weekend.